We prayed it all is well with you. However, our prayers are also continually going out uh, for the uh, victims of the collapsed building in Surfside, Florida. Uh, It's been several days now since we have been, you know, during the schedule, uh, trusting the Lord our, and therefore we've not had an opportunity to make a lot of comments about uh, that horrific event that took place on Wednesday night, uh, nearly a week ago now. There in Surfside, Florida, with the collapse of that 12-story building known as the Champaign uh, East Building, or uh, Champaign Building at least, uh, condo b- b- property. And uh, there's still 151 persons that are unaccounted for. Ten people have actually been um, responded to as, 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 as uh, counted as dead, rather. And we want you to know that we, the members of the Outlaw World Missionary Church, are indeed in prayer uh, and we are hopeful that that people would be found alive, even at this late stage. It's not impossible. Uh, however, uh, we know how grim it looks at present. We're not disacknowledging that. But our prayers are certainly for the family and friends of such a sudden and horrific and mass um, uh, loss of life. Um, and it's just very difficult to explain um, except we just have to seek the face of Almighty God on this one. I said a word more about it on this past Sabbath regarding the collapse of the building, and I likened it to some of the collapses of of the institutions of our land, uh, the collapse of the, uh, the, 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 the church as we know it, not some building, but of the actual sense of the, the worship and love of the Word of God. And... Um, the collapse of our government. Our government has collapsed as well, uh, and you're going to find that uh, when the search is finally done, that uh, there are a lot of, a lot of people have died as a result of the collapse of our uh, constitutional democratic government and also the collapse of the church, um, as we understand it. And it looks very grim in America in that comparison. And of course, we also liken it to the times of the tribulation of which we find ourselves in at present, which is uh, hard for most people to recognize or even understand the prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, You see, a lot of people have this problem, my friend, that because, I mean, if you listen to the the false prophets, if you listen to the the hustlers, if you will, or or the feel-good preachers or uh, you know, even feel-good denominations, the Catholics, and you know, are pretty much a feel-good denomination as a group, and denominations themselves, the Methodists, the Baptists, and et cetera. Um, and the motivational speakers, which a lot of them are in, and, and they they wrap themselves in the garment of the church and the Bible, but they're, they're very trained and very talented motivational speakers, and they do very well by using the Bible as a foundation. I think people like Joris Meyer and Joel Osteen are, are excellent uh, motivational speakers. Robert Shuler used to be an excellent motivational speaker as well. Um, and perhaps one of the best I've seen do it, the motivational speaker, is a fellow by the name of Frederick Eichenkoulter, the late Frederick Eichenkoulter, known as Reverend Ike. He was a motivational speaker and just very good at it. And, you know, and listen, Michael Jordan was very good at basketball. And But these uh, motivational speakers wrap themselves in the Bible. They're not really Christians, but they it's a great way of, of entering into the hearts of people like a snake. Uh, but being motivational speakers and, and holding up the Bible is, has, uh, has uh, led a lot of people astray and they will end up in hell and probably the lake of fire as well. But the, the, the problem is here now is that the um, uh, people have a difficulty understanding Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, where Jesus goes through a litany of things that re- regarding his outline for the destruction of humanity. He goes from wars and rumors of wars and nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom and earthquakes in diverse places and famines and pestilence. And the purpose of all of these things is spoken by Jesus in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, uh, as you can see there, uh, is that he is going to destroy all of human humanity. And I think we, we scroll all the way down to Matthew t- t- chapter 24, verse 22, where it says, except for the elect, no flesh would be saved. Now, this is also a, a, a parallel to the great flood of Noah, 
when God wiped out everybody in the book of uh, in, in Genesis, in the book of uh, with Noah, Jesus says as a result of the tribulation that no flesh except for the elect, like those days should be shortened. That no flesh will be saved. In other words, what Jesus says, he's going to kill everybody. He's going to kill everybody. He's going to kill them all except for a small group of people called the elect. Well, the problem is with this is this does not this does not coincide. It does not align itself. It doesn't make sense when you look at what the church preaches about Jesus is love. He loves everybody. Confess you're a sinner. And Franklin Graham will, the, the Lord will love you. By the way, Billy Graham was an excellent motivational speaker. He was dramatic. I mean, he looked like a, Billy Graham was a Charleston Heston, Charles, Ch Charleston Heston of the, of, the, of the religious order. That boy, Billy Graham was a motivational speaker, and he had that look about him, you know, and he had that come to Jesus look about him, <laughs> you know, and everything's going to be all right. He loves you. He died for you. Jesus died on the cross for you. Come to Jesus. <laughs> he was good at that, Billy Graham. My oh, boy, he and, Fred, he, and I, he and Frederick Eicher, my two, uh, probably the best I've ever done it. However, the problem is, if you look at what's being taught in, in, in all churches today, uh, and I say all, maybe there's 1% that's not being taught in, that they're teaching, you know, all the good feelings. So it doesn't make sense that the Jesus that they're promoting as this Jesus of love that loves everybody, he loves everybody, he loves everybody, he forgives everybody. But yet on the other hand, he, he's got this wandering prophecy dangling out there like the Isles of Langerhand that he's going to kill everybody in what is known as a tribulation. He's going to tear down the temple. He's going to certain earthquakes. He's going to crack up everything all over everywhere. And people are going to die like you've never seen people die before. The same as it did, it, it, it actually says in the days of Noah, the flood, we killed everybody there. This Jesus that killed everybody in the days of the flood, but yet everybody's preaching. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. The two does not line up. And I can tell you, if there's an error, if there's somebody wrong, it ain't Jesus. It's it's them other people out there. It's them. It's them. Chris, it's, it's them. If you will, Brooklyn Tabernacle. If, if it's that eat that uh, Hillsong Church. It's that. It's that Joel Osteen. It's that. It's that crowd out there. It's that Franklin Graham crowd out there. There's that Kenneth Copeland crowd out there. That's the crowd that's wrong, not Jesus. But that having been said, I wanted you to know that we are in the tribulation uh, while the whole church, including the Catholic Church, has gone for motivation. This is a bit of a news blog we do looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the Word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning, and I'm here to serve you with news and information.